Welcome to AP Environmental Science. In this video, we are going to talk a little bit about the human population dynamics, or in other words, factors that affect how big or small the human population is in a particular location, and why the human population is growing so incredibly fast. Now to begin, there are several factors that affect human population growth. These are things like the number of babies born, how likely those babies are able to survive, how likely people in general are able to live in that particular location, access to family planning and birth control, access to enough food and enough quality food to have adequate nutrition, also access to education, particularly access to education for young women and the postponement of marriage. Those are all factors that affect how many babies are born, how many people die, how likely people are to move into an area or move away from an area, and together all that influences the human population size. Now the Earth has a carrying capacity just like any other smaller ecosystem within it. So under ideal conditions, all populations grow exponentially, and the human population is currently doing exponential growth. But here's the scary part. At some point, that exponential growth in most populations will stop or at least slow once the population is at its limit or at its carrying capacity. And that's when the overshoot and die-off starts to happen. Now, just like in natural populations in the environment, the human population is a natural population. So what could happen is if we degrade the environment too much, that means the carrying capacity will start to dip down, which means our overshoot will become a bigger overshoot. And that's kind of a scary idea to start to mull over. Now, Thomas Malthus came up with this idea that the human population growth is potentially going to exceed the growth of our food supply. Now, he said that the amount of food that's available increases linearly. However, the human population is growing exponentially. So there's going to be this crossover point where suddenly we are going to be too big for the amount of food that we can have. Now, not everybody agrees with Malthusian theory here. Some people think that there's going to be some kind of innovation that suddenly increases the amount of food that we can produce so that way we always have this food surplus. Now, that's very optimistic, and I truly hope that we can stay in that optimistic zone. There are still factors that affect the human population just like a natural wild population, and those factors can be density independent or density dependent. So again, remember density independent factors. These don't matter, they don't care how many individuals are living in an area. If you have a severe drought, there's not going to be as much plant life, and you're going to see significant decline in population, in the wild populations and in the human populations. You can have a hurricane move through a particular location. That's going to reduce or impact that population, regardless of if it's humans or mice. Now, density-dependent factors for the human population, in my opinion, are things that we could probably avoid. So density dependent factors are things like access to clean air and water and having good food available and reducing disease transmission. Now, if we stop and think about this, if you have a lot of people living really close together, diseases are going to be able to hop from person to person really quickly. Whereas if you were spread out more, that wouldn't happen. So that's what makes disease transmission a density dependent factor. But thinking about access to clean water and clean air, that becomes a density dependent factor because when you have a lot of people living close together, your waste is all concentrated in a smaller area. So there's not as much space for that waste to dilute out and to spread out. So you start to see a lot more health impacts when people are closely concentrated. 
within human population dynamics, we can actually estimate the t amount of time it will take for a population to double using what's called the rule of 70. And we can apply this to human populations and we can apply this to natural populations. So the rule of 70 is just saying that the number of years that it will take for a population to double is 70 over the annual growth rate. But the annual growth rate is written as a whole number instead of a decimal. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Now, if you are a math-minded person, you might be wondering, well, how does this make sense? How does this work? And I put this slide here so that way you can pause the video and work your way through if you're somebody that wants to. However, for the scope of this class, you just need to know the rule of 70 exists and how to use it. And we'll go through an example here. So if I wanted to know how many years it would take for a population to double if it was growing at a constant rate of 2%. Well, we would start with our equation, and it tells us the annual growth rate is 2. Now, instead of writing 0 0.02, like you would if you converted a percent to a number, you pretend that percent is the whole number. So if our growth rate was 25%, then we would say our annual growth is 25. But in, in this example, we're saying our growth rate is constant at a rate of 2%. So we would just put down two. So our number of years to double would be 70 over two, which would equal 35. I want you to get comfortable with using this equation. This equation shows up on the AP exam every single year without fail. Um, usually there's only one or two questions that require you to use this, but it's still important to understand. So in summary, the human population is currently at or perhaps even above the Earth's carrying capacity, which is kind of scary. However, there's been a lot of innovation that has allowed us to overreach what we thought was the carrying capacity in the past. Now, there are still density dependent and independent factors limiting the human population growth that we have to innovate to deal with. And that's always going to be something that we are faced with unless our population starts to decline a little bit. And we can use that rule of 70 to calculate human population growth and just population growth doubling time of any natural population. So please leave your questions here at the end. And I hope that as you watch this video, you were able to learn something.